Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little different from the usual. I'm going to show you guys how to make a moment lens mount for your Samsung Galaxy S22 or S23 Ultra. Wait a minute, you must be thinking. The S23 Ultra hasn't even been out for a week. How the heck does he know whether or not this project would work for that? Well, several reviewers on YouTube were sent prototype S23 Ultra cases and a lot of them mentioned external dimensions being largely identical to the outgoing S22 Ultra, so make of that what you will. Before anything else, a quick backstory. I bought this old Note 10 Plus back in late 2019, and it's been very reliable up to around two weeks ago when it started restarting on its own several times a day. I suspect that the screen cracks that accumulated over time let moisture and other elements in enough to start degrading the phone's internals. The Note 10 Plus was great for productivity, but it also allowed me to enjoy photography a lot. It had a decent camera sensor for its time, but one of its limiting factors was the restriction of RAW file output to the main camera sensor. Having a moment lens adapter case for it greatly enhanced the experience, since the 58mm equivalent lens yielded a field of view that was closer to the tele lenses and even those of mirrorless cameras I used to lug around for travel. Shooting raw photos with a moment lens on yielded shots such as this one from Point Lobos, this one from Yosemite, and this one from Central Park. I know that the S23 Ultra's out, but I decided to get the older S22 Ultra for now to avoid dealing with bugs and whatnot for the first few months. It's got decent sensors and offers a big enough jump from the old Note 10 Plus. More than that, it has four camera lenses each and every one of which can now output raw files. You have the main camera here, this one's the tele lens, and this one's the super zoom lens. Lastly, here's the ultra wide lens which I don't really use that much based on previous experience. Unfortunately, Moment stopped making lenses for Android phones. Rather than have the Moment teleconverter lens go to waste, I decided to create my own lens adapter for the S22 Ultra. The moment mount works by having two ears that stick out of the lens base securely screw on to the phone case. Viewing things from the other side, you can see the channels that reduce the case thickness enough to allow the lens to conveniently screw on and off while providing enough resistance to prevent unintended separation. Going back to the S22 lenses, I want to use the moment teleconverter lens with a main sensor of course, but it would also be great to be able to use it on both a super zoom and tele lenses on the S22 Ultra to diversify the optical zoom mix. I don't really see myself using the Moment teleconverter on top of the wide angle lens, so I'll do a cutout on the adapter plate for that instead. I have a cheap case right now. I want to make the lens mount modular, so I can easily transfer it to a more rugged case once I have one. Something rectangular that sticks onto the back of the case would be ideal. Once mounted, the teleconverter lens shouldn't sit too close to the phone's glass as to cause scratches. It shouldn't mount too far away as to cause venetting either. Positioning the adapter far enough so that the moment lens looks like it's about to touch the phone's glass without actually doing so would be most ideal. We now have a plan, but we still don't have the material to build on. A hotel keycard feels like a logical choice for an adapter plate, rigid yet easy to handle. Unfortunately, it was too thin for the mounting ears to grip securely. The thickness of this slim CD case seemed perfect, but it was too brittle and broke halfway through the job. Eventually, I settled on this card extracted from a TPU iPhone case. Rigid, durable, yet easy to form. Before we start cutting and drilling, some measurements are in order. The diameter of the lens's mount side is around 9.5mm, so we want holes on the adapter just a little bigger than that. The ears, on the other hand, are a little over 4mm wide. 5mm slots ought to work. Just to confirm, the mounting hole diameter on the moment case is just short of 9.6mm. The ear slots are more than 6.5mm wide, actually. We definitely have leeway here. We now have hole dimensions, but how far apart should we drill them? The outer distance between the main and super zoom lenses is 31mm. 
the inner distance is 3 millimeters. The average of the two figures is 17 millimeters. This figure represents the center to center distance of these two lenses. The tele lens sits on a perpendicular line from our earlier measurements, which greatly simplifies the job ahead. Outer distance between it and the main lens sits at 27 millimeters. The inner distance is also 3 millimeters. Together, they give us a 15 millimeter center to center distance between the main and tele lenses. What about the adapter plate itself? 60 millimeters wide by 40 millimeters tall seems like a good starting point. We will still trim to fit afterwards, since we need to avoid getting in the way of the ultra wide lens and flash. So, to sum everything up, we have three target lenses. Here's the main one, here's the super zoom one, and here's the tele one. The center distance between the first two is 17 millimeters. Between the main and tele lenses, it's 15 millimeters. The three holes are going to sit on a roughly 40 by 60 millimeter plate with enough space for sturdy foam adhesive tape on both sides. Once everything's done, we'll round out the corners and trim cutouts for the ultra wide lens and camera flash. Sounds like a plan? Let's get on with the job. I marked the 40 by 60 millimeter rectangle on the iPhone TPU case first before cutting it up. I wasn't able to get a video of its extraction, unfortunately, but here's the cut piece. I etched marks for the pilot holes using a small screwdriver and lined the plate up to the phone case just to make sure everything's in order. All three pilot holes were then drilled using a 1mm bit. After drilling, I lined the plate up again to make sure I got all of the holes right. The pilot hole for the telelens turned out to be around half a millimeter off to the right, so I made sure to slowly steer it back to center as I went up in drill bit diameter. It's important to keep checking in between hole diameter increases so you get to catch and correct errors before it's too late. After the 2mm bit, the telelens hole was still off to the right. One size later and after the 3mm bit, the tele lens hole was corrected, but the main lens hole was off a little to the left. Again, I tried to compensate while drilling the next size up. I did these drill and check cycles through 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, and 7mm drill bits. After the 7.5mm bit, the hole for the super zoom lens was too much down and right. I had to really concentrate on correcting this, since the last 9.5mm diameter was just a few steps away then. Fortunately, I was able to center everything by the time I reached the final 9.5mm hole diameter. I aligned the plate over the case and marked sections for trimming, and proceeded with the reduction. Once I had a rounded rectangle, I temporarily fixed the plate using adhesive putty and marked the camera flash and ultra-wide lens cutouts and slots for the mount ears to go through as well. Trim them one by one, starting with the tele-lens slots, and then a quick test fit to make sure I got the whole format right before duplicating it on the other lens slots. Wonderful. Another test after making slots for the main and super zoom lenses. Now that the moment lens screw securely to every one of them, I went ahead with rounding the new corners and making the ultra wide lens cutout. Finally, I deburred and smoothed things out with felt polishing wheels. I used a large diameter one for the perimeter and a smaller one for the lens cutouts. I noticed that the adapter plate would warp a little after screwing the lens on, so I added reliefs for the mount ears in the locked position. They'll also serve as tactile guides to prevent overshooting whenever I screw the lens in. I marked them with a paint pen first, and etched them in with a tapered bit. Some more testing, and we're ready to mount the plate.
Since the adapter plate we made is nice and clear, we can just center it over the lenses and draw an outline of where the ridge around the camera array is on the case. That's exactly what I did here. The automotive foam adhesive we're going to use to mount the plate onto the case is around 1mm thick, and the outline we just drew serves as a great guide for where the tape should terminate. Done correctly, the adhesive tape strips would catch onto the case ridges and help us position the plate quickly and precisely. I tried it with foam adhesive on one side first to verify. Once I confirmed the tape's position to be correct, I went ahead and filled the other side with adhesive tape. One last check before trimming all of the excess off. And here's the adapter plate ready for mounting. Wipe the mounting surface clean. Get the left side to catch onto the ridge first. And finally, press it down once you confirm perfect alignment. There you go! The S22 Ultra now has an adapter plate that allows the Moment 58mm lens to be mounted to the telelens, main lens, and super zoom lens. There's also around half a millimeter of allowance between the Moment lens base and the glass on the S22 Ultra's camera array, so we won't get any scratches there. Alright then, on to the test shots. My results were a mixed bag, I'll walk you through them lens by lens. Towards the end of this video, I'll also provide the final full frame equivalent focal length for all the lens combinations now possible with my S22 Ultra. If you're enjoying this video so far, I hope you can take time to hit like and subscribe to my channel. It'll greatly help get my videos out there for more people to see. Okay, first up, the main lens. This is what default shots with it look like. Edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is excellent, save for a little softness at the extreme periphery. This is what shots with the main lens look like with the Moment Teleconverter on top. Like in the first shot, center sharpness is excellent. There's some softness on the left edge and noticeable aberrations on the right side of the image, however. I noticed that the Optical Image Stabilization, OIS for short, makes the main and telelens modules move a lot inside the phone whenever the camera is activated. I suspect this and the main camera's wide field of view played the role in the right side aberrations I showed you guys earlier. Next, the telelens. Nothing to complain about here. Edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is fantastic. With the moment lens on top of it, this is what you get. The camera focused on the wire at the lower part of the photo, unfortunately, but I don't have any issues with sharpness on this combo. Finally, the super zoom lens. Here's what its output looks like. Center sharpness is great, but there's some minor softness on the corners. Unfortunately, the Moment Teleconverter didn't work well at all with the super zoom lens. Even at proper focus, this combination yielded overly soft photos that reminded me of vintage camera lenses at excessively wide aperture settings. I was honestly surprised by this, since I expected the lens with the narrowest field of view to have the best results in this little experiment. Here's another set of photos with the moment lens on. This one's with the main lens, edge-to-edge -edge sharpness was excellent this time around. This one's with the telelens, the best combo of the bunch, in my opinion. Still poor results from the super zoom combo. This one's at ISO 160, and this one's at ISO 400. Last but not the least, a shot with a wide angle lens to test the cutout on the adapter plate. Fortunately, the plate didn't get in the way of the shot. As promised, here are the full frame focal length equivalents for the S22 Ultra's lenses and their Moment Teleconverter combos. Based on what I've read so far, the S23 Ultra's modules have identical fields of view. The main lens offers a field of view identical to a 23mm lens on a full-frame camera. Since the Moment 58mm lens is essentially a 2x teleconverter, the main lens functions as a 46mm with it on. The telelens is a 69mm equivalent, doubling to 138mm with the Moment on. 
The super zoom lens functions like a 230mm. Had the moment lens played nice with it, it would have given 460mm outputs. The wide angle lens outputs 13mm field of views. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you want to see more of these videos, please feel free to hit like and subscribe to my channel. As always, I promise not to spam your feed with clickbaity thumbnails and the like. Thank you for staying till the end, and I'll see you next time.